So what we're going to change a little bit here and shift is looking at where we're going from a cloud perspective. So we have in the past had mostly our own private data centers, but we're really at a point right now where we've got 75% of companies have an active uh, hybrid cloud strategy, if not they've already implemented hybrid cloud. And it's not necessarily about which cloud is best. There's not going to be one that's best for everything. It's again looking at options. So for a particular application, it may make sense to run it in my own private data center if I want to make sure, you know, from a security perspective, that that's all owned in-house. But maybe I want to let my developers use AWS so they can burst workloads and spin them up, spin them down as needed. So we need to look at things like price, performance, and at the end of the day, again, what does the application need? Where is it going to run best? And I want to be able to track that too. How many of you guys have worked with more than one cloud in your personal environment? One? A little bit? Okay. Well, we're still at this point, so you've got a little ways. <laughs> you can still get up there. <laughs> so what we want to do with Clicker, um, the main two problems that Clicker is addressing, uh, first is if I have a mix of clouds, let's say I've standardized on ACI in my private data center, hopefully, but doesn't have to be. Um, but I'm also exploring looking at something like AWS or Google Compute. Um, problem is today that the infrastructure automation and the application automation uh, are really two separate functions and usually two separate teams. So I've got to have folks from the infra side, whoops, infra side, that know how to configure or script or whichever interface I'm using to automate that infrastructure, my networking, compute, storage. Uh, and then I have my app and my server guys and gals. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and we've got a good showing of women, actually. Three, three in the room, that's pretty good. Uh, so we, you know, it's separate teams for each of those. And then suddenly, though, if I need to, I want to, you know, my CTO tells me, okay, we're going to move things to AWS now. Well, these APIs here are going to be different than the APIs that AWS uses. So those people are either going to have to learn new skill sets or I'm going to have to have different people that know how to configure, script, everything else for AWS. So different teams, more girls, <laughs> three girls. <laughs> so different teams for these different clouds. So it's great that there are all these software defined APIs that our cloud providers have and our uh, things like that we have with our open API with ACI. Um, but again, it's, it's going to be different skill sets to configure all those clouds. So those are the two main challenges that we're trying to address with Clicker is I want to be able to abstract away that infrastructure configuration. I don't want to know how to configure ACI. I don't want to have to change that and understand how to configure AWS or build a whole new skill set when I go to Google Compute. Um, and that also is going to help us develop and deploy applications a lot faster if I can kind of take that piece out of the equation and I can instead lay something on top which is going to be Clicker, or now Cisco Cloud Center. Lots of clouds. Told you to get cloudy in here. So now I can lay Cloud Center on top, and that is going to abstract away this configuration. And now my users are all going to talk to Cloud Center. So now all they're dealing with is developing their application, um, taking it through all the application lifecycle stages, and then deploying it out for users to consume. So all they'll do that we'll see in the demo here is they're just simply uh, have a list of clouds. So when they want to deploy an app, they'll see ACI Data Center 1, Data Center 2, AWS. They just pick which one from a dropdown, uh, and that's it. They don't have to know anything behind that. So it gives us kind of a template cloud agnostic platform. So it allows us to kind of have this single uh, central self-service portal for application developers and our IT users.
So at the end of the day, we're not worrying about that infrastructure. And then we can take that a step farther too and do things like migrate between clouds. Right, so when that CTO says, I wanna go from ACI, I wanna start using some AWS, I can have the same application that I'm running over here and I can migrate it to different cloud environments and Clicker will handle all that uh, for me. Does it become architecturally heavy on the front end in order to configure it for you know, AWS, GCP, Azure, et cetera, or, and or adding on additional sites or services, but then in, in, implementation engineering wise is real easy because then they just do from a drop down, mm -hmm. but someone has to architect that drop down initially, right? So setting up a new cloud, and I'll show in the demo too, mm -hmm. it's just simply adding a cloud, giving credentials, your AWS account, the region, and that's it. For ACI, it's just pointing to vCenter credentials, ACI credentials, that's it. Oh, cool. So it, that's the nice part is Clicker is really, um, you know, a, a manager. Way, yeah, definitely. abstracting and you know, it's really just the, the place that's pushing out our application config, sitting on top of everything else. So uh, architecture heavy part happened on Cisco's engineering side to make it where it's pushing through and it's re real easy to just, you know, drag and drop and click and such. Yeah, yeah, so there, there's really two pieces to Clicker um, or Cloud, Cloud Center. Center. <laughs> Uh, we have Cloud Center Manager, which is really the, the GUI where we're doing this configuration where you go to deploy your apps. And you'll typically have one instance of that. Um, and then the, the secret sauce, the patented technology, is the Cloud Center Orchestrators, the CCOs. And you'll have a CCO for each instance in a cloud. So I'll have a CCO for this instance of ACI, I have an orchestrator for this instance. I'll have an instance instance over here that knows how to talk to AWS West. So that orchestrator, that's where the, all the engineering effort is done. That's the patented technology mm -hmm. that is the brains behind taking that intent of policy that we configure in the manager and turning that into infrastructure configuration on the back end. And there's over, uh, over 17 clouds supported now by Clicker, both public and private, all the main ones. And we'll see that in the demo too, all the different clouds you can connect to. So this orchestrator knows the API at each of those clouds. Yep. And if the API changes, the orchestrator needs updated. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so essentially you're taking you know, the skill set that these guys had before and we're bundling that into this orchestrator. So they don't need to know that anymore. They can just go through one central tool. So now this team, they're able to deploy with, to AWS without knowing how that's configured and vice versa, those AWS folks know how to deploy apps to ACI without having to learn this. Those are the two main components. Other questions so far? I had a question actually trailing back that was uh, posed by someone regarding uh, the CLI options we have mm -hmm. for configuration. Does that support uh, OBS as well as the native everything running on Cisco format? OBS, you know, I don't know. I can take that back though. For the NXOS CLI? Yeah. The CLI and the advanced GUIs and the web API or the APIs and stuff in general. Okay. Okay. For, okay. All right. So that's, that's kind of the piece of Cloud Center that we're seeing, abstracting those clouds, but also giving our developers a place to manage their application throughout the whole life cycle. So they can have, uh, they can build their applications, they can model it, they can take it through Clicker for, as it goes through development, test, and then push it into production. We can do pretty advanced versioning within Clicker as well. So it's not just a place to you know, deploy some apps, it's really for developers to build the apps out from start to finish as well. So the three, three of the main use cases that we've been looking at, there are many more, but over the last year since I've been working with Clicker, uh, the first thing that we wanted to accomplish uh, with the joint partnership is be able to do the basic tenant and application profile onboarding. So in Clicker, they also have the concept of an application profile, it models an app. When that gets deployed in Cloud Center and I select one of my ACI clouds, what Clicker is actually pushing on the back end into ACI is it's pushing that application profile which maybe is has a web tier
app tier database tier on the back end. So it's going to push the profile with the endpoint groups. It's going to push the contracts between based on however the application was modeled up here. And it's also going to push in the, the filters, so the ports uh, that are permitted, right? So maybe 80 and 443 here. If I have a contract to my external. So all of that now, once I've got ACI set up, then I can just use Clicker as my central point to deploy these apps out. It'll push all those ACI objects in on the back end. And I'll see those. I can still manage ACI independently if I want to. Uh, but now my, my developer folks and application consumers don't have to understand these concepts. They're pushed in for us. Clicker can also, uh, if you want to go a step farther and add things like service graphs, you can create the service graphs in ACI, um, and they'll be exposed and pulled into uh, Cloud Center. So maybe I'm deploying an F5 as part of my application. I'll see a drop down that shows the different service graph uh, options that have been deployed in ACI. It also will do that for my external L3 connections. I'll have a drop down for the L3s so I can map you know, not just the application, but the connections it has to the outside world and services as well. Is there a whole family of supported product solutions, you know, third party options that you can pull in from that standpoint? Yeah. Yeah, so Clicker, um, the main ones they focused on, so F5 and then um, oh, we'll have to look up the other one in here. Um, but it's, they operate in kind of the same way. There's nothing restricting integrating that. You can build your own services. Mm. So if there's something that's not supported, you can build a service uh, that can talk to your appliance and leverage that and provide it as a service when you model it in, app, uh, in Clicker. Oh, cool, yeah. very cool. Very extensible. Um, so the basic, uh, yeah, the tenant and application onboarding. Um, another use case that we've seen is the multi-pod or multi-site deployment. So today uh, with ACI, let's say I've got these in two very geographically dispersed data centers, but I want to manage them as one instance. Then I can use Cloud Center to lay that on top of all of my ACI data centers and manage all of those from a single, single clicker instance. I may have 10 ACIs, but manage all of it from one point and have that same application profile templates that get deployed to all of those clouds. So it keeps it consistent and gives me that central point of management. And if you lose connectivity to your cloud center for whatever reason, it doesn't break anything. You just can't manage it during mm -hmm. the, the time that's down. Yeah, it's really just, just an orchestrator. So once the application is deployed, Clicker's still monitoring it. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, if we, if we lost Cloud Center, you're just not going to be able to make changes. But it's not going to kill the instances. No. That would be bad. <laughs> Does it, well, police changes, because if you've got someone who goes in and starts doing some manual stuff from an ACI standpoint, will it go and audit those changes, overwrite those changes, or how does it treat ad hoc you know, modifications? I believe it will see, well, if you're changing something from the ACI side, for example, like if you were adding a, <clears throat> a filter within a contract, um, I think it would just, because you're going to be modifying the applications once they're deployed anyway, mm -hmm. so that would just be seen as a change post-deployment. So it incorporates that back into its like management model of it, because sometimes there'll be like someone's troubleshooting something and or someone's rogue, and they go and they make some type of modification at the, the command line level. Mm -hmm. I mean. Uh, if we didn't have Clicker, we would have just people doing that normally, and we'd have the environment operating however it happens to be, whether in or out of compliance. You know, yeah. I guess like the old adage of uh, you know show and run are off by two years, um, and then like we reboot and nothing comes back up. <laughs> that's never happened anymore. <laughs> so is there a way where it's actually you know? And that, that's the part I'm curious as to uh, what level of integration it does to that, whether you know. It actually goes through and makes changes there or monitor yeah. for those changes. So if you made a change like adding a, a port filter within ACI in the contracts, that would not change the Clicker application profile because you want that as kind of the master template yeah. for the app that gets deployed. That's something that you would manage within ACI. So you would see that as an event. That's something that you could correlate and track the health scores, events, and logs mm -hmm. within ACI. Okay, cool. yeah. Third use case that we've seen, which is a pretty powerful one, is the, the migration piece. 
So uh, once I start to have enough clouds at some point, I'm going to want to be able to migrate those applications between clouds. That's something that Clicker allows us to do. Once we've modeled that app, we can deploy that in any cloud and then move that, move that between the clouds. Uh, one other feature before we get into the demo that's coming. So right now, these are the, the objects that Clicker is going to push into ACI. Uh, but in the June-July release uh, timeframe, we're going to have the ability, Clicker is going to have a concept called network profiles, where it's also going to allow a user to create things like tenants, um, create my bridge domains, create my VRFs, the L3 outs. Um, and configure all of that from a from a wizard inside Clicker. So you're further abstracting everything away, even the kind of what's considered the, the day one backend infrastructure configuration. You can expose that to your Clicker users if you choose to and allow them to create objects from there so you don't have to go to ACI. All right, other questions before we get into the demo? Um, Cisco Cloud Center, is this something that's hosted on site or is it hosted out? So you would have it in your own private data center. Um, so again, it's the Cloud Center Manager. You'd have one of those. And then you'd have an orchestrator for each instance in each cloud, uh, those components. Mm. And the way that um, we're still, the pricing uh, actually should be hashed out now. But it's licensed based on the manager and how many orchestrators you have, uh, and then how many VM instances that you're managing, which can go anywhere from you know, 100 virtual machines or 100 instances up to 25,000 with the licensing model. So it's is, is the intent for customers who have multiple ACI pods to primarily use Cisco Cloud Center in the future and not really use ACI that much except for initial standup? Yeah, if, if that's what they want. And again, it's, a, it's different strokes for different folks, right? If we have kind of the network background folks, they're probably going to want to be using ACI. Um, you know, more application developer focused or IT user, they're going to be going to Clicker. And more for self-service. Yeah. So, but, yeah. But it leverages ACI. It's not like you can do Clicker independent of ACI, or would you, you know? Yeah, you can do it independent of ACI. ACI is just one of the cloud options, one of the private cloud options oh, that yeah. Clicker supports. Yeah, so you, you don't have to have ACI at all. Oh, cool. I would like it if you Good did. But <laughs> 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 no, don't have to at all. And you said one orchestrator for each cloud. For each instance in each cloud. So if I was using like two AWS regions, I'd have an orchestrator in each region. Each so the mm -hmm. orchestrator needs to be present in that region to well, configure uh, the infrastructure on the and back. And that end. one runs on premises, or are you running that physically in AWS or you know, so it'd be, GCP location? Yeah, basically a, a VM instance okay. in each of those locations. And if, if I had you know two vCenter data centers, I'd have an orchestrator VM and running in each of those. Mm -hmm. 